So now we're going to look at some decimals and the different ways you can represent their value. But first, let's take a look at this place value chart. And let's also pay close attention to the fractions that you see above the words. After the decimal point, you have your tenths, then your hundredths, then your thousandths. Remember, each place value gets smaller the further you go to the right. Here, we have an example of a decimal, 0 0.07. I read this as 7 hundredths. Let's put it in the place value chart and see why. Here, we do not have any ones, so there's just a zero in my ones. There's not any tenths, but I do have seven hundredths. That means I have seven groups of one hundredth. This shows you that this value is less than one. Fractions are less than one whole, and so are decimals. So let's take a look at this one and see other ways we can represent it. Here we have some of the different ways you can represent seven hundredths. This first is one of the most common ways you'll see decimals represented. This is called standard form. Next, we see seven hundredths represented in word form. When you are writing out decimals in word form, be careful to make sure that you do have that THS at the end. That helps distinguish my decimals from my whole numbers. Next is something that might be a little new. It is expanded form, but I'm using it with fractions and multiplication. Now, multiplication is just grouping of things. So if I have seven one hundredths, that's just seven groups of one one hundred. And with this next one, it's still expanded form, same thing, just with decimals. When you have this seven hundredths, that's just seven groups of one hundredth. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have a decimal and a place value chart that stops under the thousands place. So I would read this decimal as three thousandths. Let's take a look at the different ways we can represent this decimal. So here we have the standard form and the word form. Both of these should sound pretty familiar to you. But getting back into these expanded form with fractions and decimals, let's take a little bit closer look at that. Three one thousandths. Here in my place value chart, I do have my three in the thousands, and you can see here the one over one thousand. Well, if I have three of them, that is three over one thousand. That is equal to three groups of one over 1,000. And let's make sure we keep the fraction over here in parentheses. For expanded form with decimals, I have three thousandths, and that's just equal to three groups of 1,000. So we have our examples of standard form, word form, expanded form with fractions, and expanded forms with decimals. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have five and 324 thousandths. That's my whole number, a decimal point, my tenths, hundredths, thousandths. That's how I know to read that as five and 324 thousandths. Let's take a look at that in word form. In word form, wherever your decimal point occurs, you're gonna put the word and. So that's five and 324 thousandths. Make sure that THS is at the end to make sure that you understand that is a decimal. Expanded form with fractions. Now, this five is in the ones place. So I'm gonna put five times one, which equals five. That's my whole number. This three is in the tenth spot. I have three groups of one tenth. That's three tenths. I have a two in the hundredth spot, so I'm going to put two times one hundredth. Two groups of one hundredth is two hundredths, right here. Next, I have four times one one thousandths, because I have a four in the thousand spot. I have a plus sign in between each grouping, and all together, if I worked this out and did the math, 
I would end up with five and three hundred twenty-four thousandths. Expanded form with decimals. Just like with the fractions, I'm starting out with five times one because that's my whole number. I have a three in the tenth spot, so that's three times one tenth plus my two in the hundred spot, two times one hundred plus my four in the thousand spot is four times one thousand. Let's practice putting some examples into standard form. First, we have four thousands. That means the only place with value is going to be my thousands place. I have no ones, no whole numbers, no tenths, no hundredths, just four thousands means I only have a four in the thousands place. Next, I have seven and two thousands. Remember, this and means I'm going to have a decimal point and a two in the thousands place. That's seven and no tenths, no hundredths, two in the thousands, seven and two thousands. Last, I have a fraction, 13 over 1,000. That just means 13 thousands. Now, there's no tenths. I have a one in the hundredths, but if you think about 13 thousandths, that's tenths, hundredths, thousands. See how my last digit ends in the thousands place? That can kind of help me know that I'm on the right track when I put a fraction into a decimal. Let's practice together and find the value of each emoji. Here you'll see some examples of expanded form. We are going to work on putting them in standard form. With each example, each digit is separated by an addition symbol. And if you look at each example, the beginning is more of your whole numbers and the end are your decimals or your fractions. Let's focus on the whole numbers first. 4 times 10 is 40 plus 6 times 1 is 6 plus, well, I see some decimals right here, so let's just forget about that for just a second. 4 times 10 is 40, plus 6 times 1 is 6. All together, that gives me 46. So that's my whole number. Since after this grouping, I'm starting to see decimals, we are going to go ahead and just put our decimal point. Then I can look at the decimals. Next, I have 7 times 1 tenth. All that's telling me is that I'm going to put a 7 in the tenths place. Next, I have 8 times 1,000. But if I think back to my place value, I know that it has a decimal point, then tenths, then hundredths, then thousands. But this example doesn't have any hundredths, so I'm just going to put a zero. Now, when I see 8 times 1,000, I'm going to put an 8 in the thousand spot. This makes my example 46 and 708 thousandths. Next, we're going to find the value of our sunglasses emoji. So if we look at our example, we have 2 times 10, which is 20, plus 3 times 1, which is 3, plus, now I'm starting to see some fractions, so let's wait just a second. Let's focus on this whole number first. 2 times 10 is 20 plus 3 times 1 is 3. Altogether, that gives me 23. Notice how I went ahead and put a decimal point here. Even though I'm not seeing decimals, I'm seeing fractions. And let's remember that decimals and fractions both represent values less than one whole. And when we're writing a decimal, everything after the decimal point is less than one whole. So it's the same concept. If I have 7 times 1 tenth, that's just putting a 7 in the tenths place. Next, I have the hundredths. 9 times 1 hundredth. I do not have a thousandths for this example, so I can just stop here. My answer is 23 and 79 hundredths. Last, we have the hard eye emoji. Just like before, let's find our whole number first. I can see decimals start coming into the example here. That means everything before that is my whole number. 3 times 100 is 
300 plus 6 times 10 is 60. Altogether, that gives me 360. I have my decimal point because everything next is less than one whole, our decimals. 9 times 100. Now remember, like last time, this is skipping a place value. Right after the decimal point is always the tenths place. This example does not have a tenths in the example. So I'm going to put a zero because putting that zero here helps me put this nine in the hundred spot. If I didn't have that zero there, it would look like my nine was in the tenth spot. Last, I have eight times one thousandth. So I'm putting a eight in the thousand spot. Altogether, in standard form, we have 360 and 98 thousandths. To find out how long it takes for the Earth to completely orbit around the sun, put this in standard form. Here we have one, two, three groups of numbers before we get into the fractions or decimals. Three times 100 is 300. Six times 10 is 60. 5 times 1 is 5. So for our whole number, we have 365. Next, I have 2 times 1 tenth. That means we have two groups of 1 tenth. That also means I'm just putting a 2 in my tenths place. Next, we have 5 times 1 hundredth, which means I have 5 hundredths. So I'm going to put a 5 in the hundredths place. I don't have thousands for this example either, so it takes 365 and 25 hundredths days for the Earth to orbit the sun. This elephant's trunk is about 91 and 432 centimeters long. Write this number in expanded form with fractions. Let's take a look at the whole number first. My first digit is 9 in the tens place. So how many groups of 9 equal 90? Well, 9 times 10 is 90. Next, I have 1. That's just one group of 1, 1 times 1. Now I have my decimals. But since I'm putting it with fractions, I'm going to write fractions in my parentheses. First, I have 4 tenths. That's 4 groups of 1 tenth. That looks like 4 times 1 over 10. Next, I have three in the hundredths place. That means I have three groups of one hundredth. That's three times one over one hundred. Last, we have two in the thousandths place. That's two groups of one thousand. Two times one over one thousand. 